two questions must be addressed when modifying genes. The first question is what kind of modification to make to the gene. The second step is to determine how to incorporate that change into all of the other cells that need to be altered in order to achieve the desired effect. There are several methods for altering the gene. The DNA in the gene could be replaced by DNA from outside the gene, a process known as homologous replacement. Alternatively, the gene could be forced to mutate, or a gene could simply be added. Similarly, a chemical could be used to simply turn off a gene, preventing it from functioning. There are also several methods for delivering the genetic change to all of the cells that must be altered. If the altered cell is a reproductive cell, then a few such cells could be altered, and the change would spread to the other somatic cells as the organism develops. But if the change were made to a somatic cell, changing all the other relevant somatic cells individually like the first would be impractical due to the sheer number of such cells. A major organ cells, such as the heart or liver, are too numerous to be changed one by one. Instead, a carrier or vector, which can be a molecule or an organism, is a common approach to reaching such somatic cells. A virus, for example, could be used as a vector. The virus would be rendered harmless or altered so it would not cause disease. It would then be injected with the genetic material and the new genetic material would be introduced as it reproduced and infected the target cells. Viral vectors have to be very specific, for example, a virus that infects and changes only heart cells without infecting and changing all other cells in the body. Fat particles and chemicals have also been used as vectors because they can carry the new genetic material through the cell membrane and into the nucleus.